and I wrap my fingers around her throat. What is up, you wonderful person? I'm gonna finish Lynn today. This is gonna be a little psychotic, but hear me out on this. I'm just gonna finish it. This episode's probably gonna be really long. I don't wanna leave myself hanging. I don't wanna leave you hanging, but I really wanna be done with this game. So, that's what we're gonna do. If this is your first time going on an adventure with me, Spud Scribe makes Spudsy happy. Become a wonder friend today. Let's get to work. I'm lying on my bed, not doing anything in particular, just staring at the ceiling. I should probably be studying, but I can't even bring myself to look at my textbooks. The mere thought of cracking them open makes me feel ill. So I don't look at them. I keep staring at the ceiling. I think about Susie. I think about Aki. I think about Jas. I even think about Jas's unborn baby. I wonder what she's going to call him. Jas had a scan a while back. The doctor said her baby was going to be a boy. I asked Jas if she was going to name her baby after dad, and Jas let out this colossal snort and rolled her eyes so far back into her skull, I thought they'd fall out. I didn't press the issue, but I decided to take that as a no. Our, ja our house is cramped enough as it is. There are only two bedrooms, mom and dad in one, Jas and I in the other. I've never had a room of my own. I envy Susie, who has such a nice big bedroom filled with things. You know, looking at this picture... That's kind of how my childhood bedroom roof looked. Like all textured and stuff, and I would like to stand on the bed and rub it, and then pieces would fall off, and it was probably really dangerous. Anywho, ah, uh, next one. She's an only child, and she doesn't have any brothers or sisters to worry about. I'm here, Susie. I'm sure Susie's parents have more than enough room in their house to slot in a newborn baby, but I can't ask them to take in Jass's kid. I don't think Susie's parents like me very much, let alone my bastard baby brother. Ouch, that's savage, Susie. That still leaves one question. Where will the baby go? Where will he fit? And, what will Dad say when the baby's been born? He won't be able to pretend Jas isn't pregnant then, not when the evidence is staring him right in the face. Will he lose his temper? What if he makes a scene at the hospital? What if he starts shouting at Jas? I can hardly bear to think about it. Maybe I shouldn't think about it. I don't want to, but... Remember, anything can make sense if you just don't think about it. Lynn, are you busy? Oh, it's Dad. There's a doll knock against my bedroom door. It's Dad. Lynn! Hey, Lynn! He knocks again. He isn't knocking very loudly, but I know Dad well enough to know this could become violent at any given second. I sit up, brushing my fingers through my hair, and hasten to answer him. I'm free. You can come in. You can come in! The door handle turns. The lock clicks. I swallow. Dad stands in the doorway in all his glory. He's a huge, hulking figure, over six feet tall, with broad shoulders and hands large enough to crush whole walnuts. And come to think of it, this game has made me say the exact sentence I swallow more times than I am strictly comfortable with. When I was a little girl, I couldn't imagine there existed anybody bigger than him. I was wrong. Dad isn't even that tall, not compared to other people. He's a little above average, I guess, and the muscles he's developed through years of manual labor add to his intimidating physique, but there are bigger men. But I don't live with any men like that, and even if I did, I haven't learned to be scared of them. Not in the same way I've learned to be scared of Dad. Hey, Lynn. But Dad doesn't look very intimidating right now. He lingers in the doorway, his face strangely guilty like he expects to get scolded. Can I come in? Um, sure, yeah. You're already in here, aren't you? I scoot to one side on my bed, opening up space for Dad to take a seat. He does so, but not before closing the door behind him. My fingers curl into fists against my better judgment. I wonder why. Self-defense? You're not cross with me, are you? I'm not cross, why? You've been a bit quiet lately, and you hardly said anything at dinner. You hardly ate anything, either. Oh... I didn't think he'd noticed. I thought he was too busy listing all of Jass's faults and flaws. 
rude, ungrateful, careless, irresponsible, inconsiderate, prideful, the list goes on and on. I wasn't hungry. Are you sure? I think you've lost a bit of weight lately. Really? Mm, your cheeks are hollowing out. You look like a little skeleton. Mm, baby, it's true. I've suffered from nightmares for as long as I can remember. They've been growing more and more pronounced lately. The nightmare last night about the stage show and the insects was rather tame in comparison. How can I be expected to eat after such awful dreams? I'm fine, really. I'm not hungry, that's all. You're not on some kind of diet, are you? I shake my head. Good, I'm not a girl, but I know you're all into silly stuff like that. Dash was the same at your age, but now... Dad grits his teeth together for a few moments. I worry he's going to explode, but then he exhales heavily and his posture relaxes. That's not important. We're not talking about Jas. Let's talk about you. There isn't much to talk about, really. Nonsense. You're my little girl. I really am little compared to Dad. I don't see how my littleness makes me any more interesting, but I keep quiet. It's best to keep quiet around Dad. Your exams are coming up. Nervous? A bit. Well, it's normal to be nervous. I was nervous when I had my exams, too. It's part of being a kid. Why does everyone but Lynn's parents have pictures? Like, is this kind of like, uh, like Charlie Brown going on here? He ruffles the top of my head with a big callous hand. It feels like I'm being mauled by a crab. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You'll be fine, though, Lynn. You've been studying, haven't you? I glance at my bedside table, stacked high with Jass's old textbooks that I haven't bothered to open. I swallow. AGAIN! WHY IS THIS A PHRASE?! I don't know what hurts more, Dad's large hand on top of my head or the weight of his expectations. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, I, I've been studying! Good girl, so long- oh, so long as you try your best, that's all I can ask for! Uh, I'll try. But I know I don't mean it. Oh, <laughs> cuz I'm a rascal. Is that what you were doing with Susie today, love? Studying? Yeah. That's nice. I knew she was a good influence. I'm glad you're hanging out with the right sort of kids, Lynn. Not like Jass and her brat doll friend. She was always going off with that awful Vaughn girl. She, there, she's so much older than our Jass. I should have been stricter. I told her off enough times, but... but Jass doesn't listen. She doesn't, does she? Never has done, never will. Even when I shout at her. I don't know why he's a redneck all of a sudden. It makes me wonder what the point of it all is. He sighs. What kind of father am I if I can't even discipline my own children? I, I don't think anybody could discipline Jas. She's a law unto herself. My wry comment brings a smile to Dad's lips. It's rare that I see Dad smile, but when he does, it's usually around me. I'm not trying to boast. That's just how things are. Jas never makes Dad smile. She makes him shout and spit and rage. You're right. Totally right. You're often right, Lynn. I don't know. I do. Don't sell yourself short. I was like Jess when I was her age. I thought I knew best. I never listened to anybody. Least of all my parents. I was a shithead. I made a lot of mistakes when I was raising Jess. So did Mary. I don't want to take this or make the same mistakes with you. I want you to study hard. I want you to get a good job. I want you to make something of yourself. You know that, don't you, sweetie? All of a sudden, my throat feels dry. My head pulsates. Full of millipedes is my mind, dear wife. I think that's from Shakespeare, Macbeth. We were studying it in school. At least I remember something. 
Too bad all the things I remember are completely worthless. Why am I telling you this? Oh, you're a good girl, a smart girl. You might not be great at math or science, but I'll know you'll ang ace English for sure. Your English teacher always said nice things about you at Pyron's evening. Dad ruffles the top of my head. You'll do all right, love. I have faith in you. You'll make your old man proud. Dad's never did, but you're different. I hope you don't let me down. Ah, yeah, ah. Nailed it. I sigh softly. Vague noises escape from my lips. I hardly sound intelligent, but at least I'm sentient. I know I still exist. It's the middle of the night, and the lights are dim, and the sky is filled with stars, but I still exist. I don't need to find proof of my own worth from strangers on the internet like Susie does. I don't extort older men for clothes and shoes and accessories online while pretending to be somebody I'm not. I don't want to. I don't think any man, no matter how desperate, would want to go out with me either. I've never been good at playing pretend, not like Susie. When we were little kids, Susie was always the one who created the complicated backstories of our dolls, or divvied up the roles when we played at being happy families. I've never had much of a model to go on. Mm -ah. Nailed it. I gasp, I tip my head back. My hair is wedged beneath my head and it hurts a little. It tugs at my scalp whenever I shift, but I try to ignore it. If nobody else wants me, no man or woman, then I can at least want myself. Since I share a bedroom with Jess, I don't often get a chance to do this. I might as well make the most of it. Holy shit, are we masturbating? Jess is still out. I don't know what she's doing or where she is, but she's probably with Bon. Dad was livid when he discovered Jess still wasn't back home by 11 o'clock. Dad tried to keep his voice down, but I could hear hear him murmuring angrily to Mom in their room. You know, I kind of like how she said no man or woman, because that's something I always said growing up. I'm like, I'm not going to limit myself to thinking that my partner is has to be from a specific gender, and that's how I ended up with a wife. That girl has no sense of respect. I'll wring her neck when she gets back. The walls in her house are thin. I can hear everything from my bedroom. I can hear the wind rattling my window pane. I can hear the faulty taps in the bathroom. I can hear the humming of the fridge downstairs. Sometimes I can hear the springs of mum and dad's bed creaking. I wish I couldn't. When we were younger, Jess and I used to giggle about it. Jess giggled about it, rather, and then went on to tell me about where babies came from and exactly what mom and dad were doing in excruciating detail. I told Jess she was gross. She laughed and told me I was being a baby. Jess was nine then. I was six. I haven't heard the springs in mom and dad's room creaking for a while. More often than not, I just hear low, angry murmuring. Arguing. Sometimes it's quiet. Sometimes it isn't so quiet. The house is almost quiet now, but it's a deceptive silence. Hold on. Sorry. Okay. The house is almost quiet now, but it's a deceptive silence that contains something deeper, something darker. The wind outside. The slow, steady dripping of the bathroom taps. The sad, sniffling sounds my mother makes when she sleeps. My own soft sighs. Mm, ah. I wonder what I should think about. I don't really know. Anything but mom and dad. Susie's told me a little about this before. She's had boyfriends, and now she has Aki, and I've... And I've had sex ed classes, but I'm not really good at this. I'm not good at making myself feel good. I'd look it up online, but there's only one shared computer in the house, and I'm too worried about somebody will find out what I've been searching for. I don't know what to do, so I grope and poke ineffectually and hope for the best. Mmm. I don't really understand my body. It's strange and alien. Whenever I shower or take a bath, I try not to look at it too much. My body makes me feel depressed. Aw, poor Lynn. I thought the teenage years were meant to be the best of your life. Why then do I look so ugly? I don't just look ugly. I feel ugly. Doing this is ugly. I don't deserve to feel good. Maybe that's why it doesn't feel good. There's too much guilt attached and awkwardness too because my parents might wake up at any second. Mm, ah. 
<sighs> Maybe if I whimper beneath my breath like they do during the sex scenes in all the movies I've ever seen, it'll feel good. But the sex scenes in movies are all staged. Even if they weren't, they usually involve at least two people, and there's only one of me. There's only ever been one of me. Oh, sorry. There only ever be one of me. Nailed it. I'll always be alone. No attractive men will try to proposition me online. They'll never buy me expensive gifts in exchange for long, drawn-out, lovely, si loveless cyber sex. No boys will try to get me drunk at parties, fuck me in Vaughn's bedroom, then leave without giving a name or their phone number. This is getting real graphic. Real fast. No guy will want to hold my hand or kiss my lips or say that he loves me, because according to Susie, romance is dead and I shouldn't hope for too much in this day and age. Why else do you think so many guys watch me when I livestream? It's because they're lonely. Maybe everybody's lonely. Isn't that why I'm doing this? I don't know. Doesn't make me feel better. Ah, uh, mm. I sound unconvincing. My soft gas are hollow and empty and devoid of emotion. I must look so stupid. I feel stupid. And I'm supposed to be the smart one. If I was more like her... But why am I thinking about that? I tense, my fingers spasm. My back arches, but not because I've managed to achieve climax or anything like that. I don't know what that feels like. Susie says it feels good. I'll take her word for it. Susie lost her virginity at the start of the school term. She's only 15. That's young. Not just young. It's illegal. It's especially shocking considering Susie is supposed to be a good girl who comes from a nice and normal family. Her dad watches birds and her mother translate manuals for assembling... TVs and kitchen cupboards, I don't think they ever argue. They don't seem like the arguing sort. But Susie still lost her virginity when she was 15, so maybe that's the normal thing that girls do. I think Jess was around that age too. But I haven't. I've never held hands with a boy, let alone kissed one. Let alone anything else. Wink, wink. Maybe I shouldn't try to think about guys. It's not really working. It just makes me feel even more aware of just how alone I am. A girl, then? Did I think about a girl? Susie? No, not Susie. She has Aki. Then... Mmm, ah. Uh, what about the other me? The Lynn with the extra E, whose name would be worth more points than mine on a Scrabble board. Does she know how to do this properly? I doubt it. She's so prim and proper. She never talks to anyone in class. I have a confession. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm out and I see people, I'm just like, wonder what their sex life is like. Do you do that? I'm probably weird. I doubt it. She's so prim and proper. She never talks to anyone in class. When we learned about sex in class, she faced forwards and looked attentive enough, but in this kind of distant way. Like it had nothing to do with her. Like she was never, ever going to have sex with any boy. Not like I can judge. Budsy, are you going to have sex with a boy? You're good, little Tato. I bet I'll never, ever have sex with a boy either. I'm going to die, sad and alone. I hope Lynn does too. Aw, oh, poor Lynn with an E. It wouldn't be fair if she has a better life than me, or better love life than me. She's already prettier than me, and smarter, and her family's richer than mine. Why does she have to take everything I want? It's not fair. Maybe it's because she comes from a better household than I do. Lynn's shoes are never scuffed, and the pleats that are of her skirt are always crisp and neatly ironed. Could I look pretty like her if I tried? I don't know. You can be pretty too. Everyone's pretty, or handsome. Just give it a little effort. You can do this. Thinking about it, Lynn does have quite a nice body. Oh, bow chicka wow wow. I wonder what it would feel like if she touched me. Bow chicka wow. What? This is weird. If she kissed me? If her tongue was inside my mouth? What would that feel like? These people are 15. I'm getting a smidge uncomfortable. What would that feel like? I work my fingers around slowly, tracing circles in an intimate place. I'm a little too embarrassed to actually name. 
I've never tried thinking about a girl like this before, least of all Lynn. It's strange. Maybe that's why I'm a little louder than usual. But I can't be loud. The walls are too thin. I don't want my parents to hear me. But it's starting to feel good, and I'm getting kind of wet, and I... Oh, oh, the stress is down. I... Oh, the stress is down. Ah. Oh, no! It's just... No! Oh, Lynn, what on earth are you doing? Oh, the stress is back. Ah! ah! For a few moments, I forget about being quiet. The thought goes out of my head altogether. It's hard to be quiet when your big sister is standing in the doorway of your shared bathroom, looking at you with evident amusement with one hand resting against her large, pregnant belly. Jazz! I pull my hand away from between my thighs like I've been burnt. I think I really am burning. My face is red raw. It's a good thing I still have the covers pulled up around me, but it should have been obvious what I was doing. Uh, you could have knocked! Sorry, sorry, I didn't know you'd be doing that while I was gone. You always seem like such a good girl. Jess snickers. She looks wickedly amused like she's seen something hilarious. Like I'm hilarious. Who would ever take me seriously anyway? Oh god, my face burns. I pull my duvet about me tightly. I wrap it about my body like a shield. I wish I could kid myself, it's an invisibility cloak, but Jazz's eyes are still boring into me. Ugh! I can hear Dad shifting around and asleep in my parents' room. The springs of the old, old mattress that needed replacing ten years ago creak. I hold my breath, waiting. But after that, he falls silent. The soft sound of his snoring permeates the house once more. The tap in the bathroom continues to drip. At least you didn't wake him up. Yeah, shuts the bedroom door behind her with a soft thud. Is he mad at me? Livid. Thought so. Why were you out so late anyway? I was at Vaughn's. We were watching Saw. Why Saw? Because it's awesome! I don't think Saw is something pregnant women should be watching. They should put a warning on it, like alcohol or cigarettes. The baby might be born all messed up. Is that how serial killers are made? I like this theory. If you watch a graphic, violent movie while you're pregnant, it's gonna be a serial killer. I just meant to watch the first one, I swear. But then Braun brought out the second and third, and... Well, I kind of wanted to marathon them. Didn't you worry about... Oh, didn't you worry what Dad would say? A bit, but I didn't want to think about Dad. I'm an adult. I should be allowed to do what I want. And you want to watch Saw. You're like an adult. Yep. It's not even Halloween. But I got the fright of my life when I came back, let me tell you. You are horrible. Jazz Snickers again. I'm just teasing. Don't take it to heart. You're a healthy young girl. It's perfectly normal. You'd want to enjoy yourself a little. Shut up. <laughs> Don't look so huffy. I'm a girl too. I know what it's like. But be quiet. Jazz smirks. Though you did sound a bit like a dying cow. Oh, that was mean. Jasmine! Oh, she has a full name! I want to shout at her, but I can't risk waking Dad. Dad gets angry enough as it is without being roused in the middle of the night. And I hate to think what he would say to Jess once he sees she's back. All I can do is whisper angrily instead. I'm mad Jess has taken away even my right to be angry. But I've never been very good at expressing myself. What? I'm just saying. You don't have to say. Well, sorry for trying to give you some advice. Wouldn't you rather it come from me than a future boyfriend? I'm never going to have a boyfriend. Well, your legs are getting kind of hairy. Don't talk about my body like that. Poor Lynn. Hey, don't sweat it. I'm not exactly rocking a bikini body here either. Jess pats her stomach. I pout in return and Jess laughs. She ruffles my hair. Don't worry, Lynn. This is just between you and me. I won't tell anyone. 
R really Yeah, although... What? Jazz prods me in the cheek. You were pulling some weird fucking faces. It looked like you'd been possessed. It was actually pretty scary. Oh, we're back up to 65%. My face burns bright red with shame. I can't pronunciate red very well, apparently. Oh, this looks creepy. Everything's made out of concrete. Are we having another nightmare? The walls, the floor, the ceiling. It's all dull and drab and gray. Mold sprouts in the corners of the room. It's dark black in the center, but pales around the edges to a soft, almost pastel blue. The mold would be almost pretty, I guess, if the rest of this place, whatever this place is, wasn't so horribly cold and dank and dark. I shift uncomfortably. My behind hurts. Cold leaks through the back of my trousers. My thighs are turning to ice. Why am I sitting down in a place like this? Where in the world am I? I try to get to my feet, but... Mm. A sharp wave of pain spikes through my right leg. It feels like something inside me has jammed. What happened? I look down, blinking, half afraid of what I might find, and... Ah. And a soft, pained moan escapes from my lips. My right leg is bent at an awkward angle. It snapped just beneath the knee like a tree branch in a thunderstorm. It sticks out sickly, uncanny, and unnatural. To the right. Much, much too far to the right. Is my bone piercing through the skin? It feels like it. It hurts. I didn't realize just how much it hurt, but that's because I didn't realize it was broken so badly. Not until I saw it with my own eyes. But that doesn't make any sense. Why didn't it hurt before? Even if I couldn't see it, I should have been able to feel it. Maybe it was the shock of being in such a strange environment, or maybe it wasn't broken before I examined it. Ah, the Schrodinger's break. I wonder idly if some invisible force, a ghost, or a ghoul, or a phantom took my leg between its spectral hands and split it in the millisecond it took for me to glance down. I don't know. I don't know anything. I bite my lower lip. My face is draining of color. I probably look like a mushroom. How did that happen? How is any of this happening? I turn to the right, to the left. I'm in a square-shaped room. There are exits all around me, but with my broken leg, there's no way I can escape. I can see a recess further back beyond an open door. There should be a stairwell there, but there isn't. There's nothing. The place where the stairs should be is completely empty. It's just a vast yawning crevice. There are no stairs. Why are there no stairs? I tried to shimmy my way down there, even without a broken leg. I think I'd end up broken in all sorts of other places upon landing. I see you're awake. Uh oh There's a voice. It's low, but distinctly female. The voice echoes around the four walls of this drab, gray, mold-ridden room over and over again. You're awake. Awake. Wake. It sounds like an accusation. A shiver runs down my spine. The air in here is colder than liquid nitrogen. It took quite a while for you to come by. Come to, you poor baby. The woman's voice sounds concerned, but something about it sets my teeth on edge. I don't trust it. I don't trust her. Where is she? I can't see her. I search for the source of the mysterious voice and... Oh. The speaker is standing in front of me. She's kneeling just inches away, so her breath glides across my cheeks. At least it would if she wasn't wearing a mask. Where did she come from? I swear she wasn't here before. There was no body, just a voice. But voices can't exist on their own. That isn't possible. Am I going crazy? Uh, ow! A sharp pain spikes through my leg. My brain was so overwhelmed by this bizarre situation, I forgot. For a few seconds, it was supposed to hurt. It hurts more than it did before. Human legs aren't supposed to bend like this, not at 90 degree angles. H how long have I been here? Does that really matter, sweetie? You're here now, and you're not going to leave. Uh, no? No, sorry. 
Uh, all right. We're just okay with this now? You might as well make yourself comfortable. You have no other choice. I can tell, despite the mask, that this woman is pretty. Her eyes are striking, and her eyebrows are curved into two neat arches. Her eyebrows are pierced. Her nose is pierced, too, and her ears. The lights in here are dim. Everything's dull and drab except for her. She's a rare, shiny object in a universe comprised of bland, repeating grays. She looks familiar. In fact, I think I recognize her. Are you... Vaughn? My name doesn't matter. I'm Vaughn question mark. Her voice is a little muffled through the surgical mask, but I'm sure it's Vaughn. It looks like her at least. But what is she doing here? I, um, I think my leg's broken. It would be sweetie. Uh, why? Why indeed, that is the question. Her eyes harden. You shouldn't need to ask me that. The reason should be obvious. What do you mean? We thought if you were subjected to a sudden sharp shock, you might remember what it was you've done wrong. But I guess not. You really are hard-headed. Or maybe you're incapable of feeling real remorse. I'm sorry? I try to keep my voice calm, even though sweat's starting to bead on my forehead. My leg doesn't just ache. It doesn't just hurt. It sears! I'm sorry if I did something wrong. I, I swear I didn't mean to. Those are pretty words, yes, but I can't trust them. Why not? How can I accept an apology when you don't understand why you're apologizing in the first place? But that's just my opinion. What does everybody else think? The girl who looks like Vaughn may, but may or may not be Vaughn, turns her head. Is she gesturing towards an audience? That can't be. We're the only ones here. Aren't we? That's what I thought, but... We're not alone. We're not alone at all. The edges of the room are crammed with people. They surround me in a circle. There are so many people, I can't even see the walls anymore. It's like they've eaten the landscape around me. Termites. There are so many people calling them a mere crowd doesn't begin to cover it. It doesn't give any sense of scale. Most of the people in the crowd are strangers. They're so strange to me, alien in fact, that I can't tell if they have eyes or ears or noses. There are a few faces, however, that I recognize. Jas. Susie. Still doing this. Mum and Dad? Why are they all standing there, watching? I try to call out to them, but I can't. The words snag in my throat. It feels like my vocal cords have been cut clean in two by a spectral pair of scissors, perhaps. Oh, it's the spoopy ghosts. I can't make so much as a squeak. My leg hurts. It hurts so, so badly I can hardly think. I can hardly even feel. Everything is obliterated by pain. Pain fills my skull like a thick cloud of smog. A cloud of flies. Oh dear. It seems like you really have let everybody down, dear. Her fingers caress my cheek gently. Her nails are long and sharp enough to cause serious damage. She could gouge my eyes out with those nails so, so easily, and she wouldn't even break a sweat. Well, that's just lazy. You can't use nails. If you're going to do a proper eye gouging, you got to use a dull, rusty spoon. That goes completely against my good influence I was trying to be in the last two episodes. She could gouge my eyes out with those nails so, so easily, and she wouldn't even break a sweat. I'm completely at her mercy. Nobody will defend me. Nobody wants to. 
They stand and watch in a circle, staring. They're all empty and soulless. Scarecrow people. Do they have any emotions in their hearts? Any care? Any compassion? Maybe I don't deserve it. Now, do you know what people do with witches? I'm a witch? I thought Vaughn was the witch, the self-proclaimed Wiccan. But I don't know if this woman is Vaughn, just like I don't know whether the Jess or the Susie or the Mum or the Dad in the crowd are really Jess or Susie or Mum or Dad. Just like I don't know if I'm the real Lynn. Is this really my body? My smashed leg feels dull and heavy. I can't move it. I don't think it belongs to me anymore. I can't twitch the toes on my right foot. I can't twitch the toes on my left foot either. Witches get burnt at the stake, right? But but why? I haven't haven't I been through enough? Don't worry about it, sweetheart. It'll be over soon. I know just how weak you are. How fragile. How easily broken. Her voice dips to a slow, sensuous whisper. But it wouldn't be fun if you passed out too quickly. Uh, what? You did something wrong, sweetie. Even if you don't remember it, we do. Look at all the people you've disappointed. All the people you've let down. She glances at the shadowy crowd. They stare at me unblinking, their eyelids permanently open. Maybe they can't blink. Do they even have eyelids? All of a sudden, this sounds rather sensible. Why should people need eyelids here? They exist solely to judge me. Of course they would stare. Excuse me, I'll just call from my lovely assistant. The woman who looks like Vaughn claps her hands together. When she does, a girl steps forward from the crowd. How much you want to bet it's going to be Lynn with an E? Holy shit, it's Lynn with an E! She isn't a tall girl. Her presence is entirely average and unimposing. She's the polar opposite of the woman who reminds me of Vaughn. She's around my height. She has a similar face, too. The same cheeks, the same nose, the same mouth, even the same nostrils. But her leg isn't broken. She walks slowly without a limp, like she has all the time in the world. Her irises are brown like mine, but they seem to stretch on forever and ever into affinity. I could be sucked up by her steady, steely gaze, like water down a drain. I know this girl. I know her. Only too well. She's there all the time. Whenever I'm asleep or awake, I can't escape from her. I can never escape. Give our guest a helping hand, dear. You know what to do. Lynn nods soundlessly and kneels down beside me. The woman who looks like Vaughn shuffles away giving Len more space to perform whatever cruel ceremony she's supposed to conduct. This is somehow getting weirder than the masturbation scene! Len with an E reaches forward. She takes a hold of both my cheeks with her hands. Her palms are cold. I shiver. Is she even alive? Her skin is so pale I'm beginning to wonder if there's any blood inside her. Maybe she doesn't have blood, but ice! That would explain why she's so cold to the touch. Her heart is a glacial lake, completely frozen over. I want to ask her why. Why are you doing this to me? Do you really hate me this much? Why do you hate me? How dare you hate me? How can you stand to make me suffer when I want to make you suffer much, much more? But I can't say any of those things. My throat is swollen. No sound comes out. Lynn parts her lips slowly. She sighs. Her sweet breath ruffles my fringe. There's something small and white, shaped like a perfect pearl resting on the tip of her tongue. It looks like some kind of tablet. Medicine? 
but I don't know enough time, or I don't have enough time to wonder. Lynn's fingers dig into my cheeks a little tighter, hard enough to hurt. Her nails rake against my unprotected flesh. Uh, and then she dips her head, her lips pressed against mine. I'm so surprised my eyes snap open wide, so do my lips. She slides her tongue inside my mouth, coiling it about mine, and deposits the strange alien peel inside me. It tastes strange. Everything here is strange. My head swims, my whole body hurts. It isn't just my leg. It f I feel like I'm being torn apart. I'm being stabbed with shards of glass over and over again. I whimper into Lynn's kiss. I don't want to swallow the tablet. I don't know what this strange medication is, but I know I can't swallow it. I won't. But Lynn doesn't draw her mouth away from mine. Her mouth is a warm cavern filled with sticky saliva. She's consuming me. Devouring me. I choke. Lynn shoves her tongue even deeper into my mouth. So, when I said this was getting weirder than the masturbation scene, this is getting a lot weirder than the masturbation scene. I find myself swallowing despite myself. The small tablet slides down my throat. Tears bead in the corners of my eyes. The piercing sensation threatens to split my body in two. It feels like I'm being ripped apart. I feel like I'm not even myself anymore. But was I ever myself to begin with? Maybe there is no girl called Lynn. This whole time I was just a copy. A fake. I can't breathe, I can't talk, I can't think. All I can do is hurt. The crowd around me starts buzzing excitedly. Lynn observes for a few moments before she draws away. It's like she can't bear to touch me. I can smell something in the air. It's smoke. It's a smoky, acrid smell. It's the smell of burning flesh falling from the bone. My skin is smoldering. My flesh is melting. The fat inside my body is bubbling. I'm hurting. I'm crying. I'm dying. My eyes start to turn to liquid inside their sockets. My eyes drip down my cheeks. Not that I have cheeks anymore, slowly, like syrup, like the whites of an overcooked egg. My right leg doesn't hurt anymore. It's no longer attached to my body. I no longer have a body. But that's fine. Maybe this is what I wanted all along. What the fuck? Okay! 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 Hey, Lynn, it's been a while since I last saw you in your uniform. Oh, hey, hey, Jess. I give my sister an awkward smile. I don't want to smile awkwardly, of course. Who does? But after my dream, last night, it's a little hard to act completely natural. You alright? You look kind of pale. I'm fine. I'll live. Heh, <laughs> you sure? Jazz smirks and takes a bite out of her toast. It's smeared with strawberry jam. The bright red against the brown toast makes me think, not of blood, but something far more sinister. Charred flesh. The sm thick smell of freshly toasted bread that lingers in the kitchen doesn't help. Here's a top tip from a girl who failed all her GCEs. Don't pass out in the exam hall. I won't! Heh, that's why- I, that's what they all say, but there's always one kid who passes out every year. Always. Is that true? Mmm, I mean it. It happened in my school year. There was a kid who passed out in the mass exam. I could remember it like it was yesterday. It was pretty funny, honestly. Uh... I don't- I think Jazz is trying to lighten the mood, but she's not exactly feeling me with confidence. Funny thing is, he wasn't a stupid kid, not like me. He was smart. He studied a lot. Maybe that's why. Jazz ponders. Her lips are encrusted with a fine film of toast crumbs. Maybe smart kids put too much pressure on themselves. When they don't do as well as they want, they freak out. As for me... Jazz shrugs. She smiles. I knew I was going to fail everything, so I never really bothered. It didn't seem like there was any point in worrying. Even though Dad kept pushing you? Even so, I know what my limits are. 
Maybe you just didn't try hard enough. I didn't try at all. You shouldn't sound so cheerful about it. I know, I know. It pisses Dad off too. I can see why, but... Well... Dad works in construction. Mom works at a checkout. We don't come from a smart family. I'm not a smart girl. I have no illusions of greatness. That's why Dad wants us to succeed. Duh! Well, I'm plenty happy living my life without amounting to anything. Thank you very much. But what about society? Society? What have they done for me recently? And just laughs. Ha ha ha. Fuck it all. It doesn't matter. Jazz sounds proud. She sounds proud about everything. Even the things she probably shouldn't be proud about. Dad tells Jazz she shouldn't be ashamed of herself. She isn't, though. Jazz is stronger than that. Jazz always says that she doesn't have a single ounce of shame in her body. Maybe that's a good thing. It doesn't mean she doesn't have to worry. Not like me. I worry about everything. You, can, you can't drop the ball on this one, Lynn. Go and make Dad proud and don't pass out. FYI, that kind of fucks up your chances. I'll keep it in mind. I peer into the bread bin, even though I don't want any toast. I'm worried if I have any breakfast, I'll throw up on the train. Vomiting over a young child would be far, far worse than knocking into them with my school bag. It doesn't matter anyway. There are only crusts left. All right, you may pick up your pens and open your papers. Your exams has now begun. A flurry of noise surrounds me. Hundreds, I think there are around 200 kids in my year, of maths exam papers are opened up and smoothed out by manicured fingers and bitten nails alike. I'm a little slower to start than the rest of my peers. I jolt, it feels like a screwdriver has been inserted into the base of my neck. What am I doing? I'm doing nothing. I'm sitting here staring dumbly at the clock mounted on the wall. Guys, I'm getting a little worried this could be the end of us. Our school is a little outdated. We do our exams in this old gym hall that has been re hasn't been refurbished since 1980. It smells of dust and old sweat. The windows are small and high up. They only let in the barest minimum light. I feel like I'm in a prison. A prison filled with rows upon rows of desks and chairs with over 200 teenage boys and girls poring over their mass exam paper. I was entered for the higher tier paper. I should have been doing foundation. My teacher had too many expectations. I think she was spurred on by, by my dad's fervent insistent during parents' evenings that I'm the smart one in the family. Sometimes, in a few of the practice papers I did in class, I managed to get B's. Sometimes meeting once. The rest of the time I got C's or D's. Susie. Susie's is the second set for mass and though she hardly ever studies she's never received anything less than a B. Life isn't fair. Speaking of Susie. Her last name is Hastings. She's sitting a couple seats in front of me. I can see her brown pigtails bouncing as she peers through her booklet. Her pen, overly cute and pale pink, glints beneath the dim lights. But she's writing. Only five minutes have elapsed, but it looks like she's finished the first couple of pages of already. Invigilator? The hell's an invigilator? I'm gonna Google it. British to watch examination candidates. Okay. Ahem! Uh oh. One of the invigilators clears his throat. I shift suddenly guilty. The invisible screwdriver applies a even greater pressure to the base of my neck. Does it look like I'm cheating? I hope it doesn't look like I'm cheating. I c open out my exam booklet and stare. Random groups of numbers stare back at me, broken up with dotted lines for me to write down my answers. I have to pick up my pen. I have to gather my senses. I have to start writing. But I can't. My brain freezes. The questions near the beginning of the exam paper aren't even the dif that difficult. I've never had any issues with these before. Find the perimeter of the shape. What is the circumference of the circle? Plot the line of best fit. It's not hard. I've answered questions like these before. 
But I can't now. For some reason, nothing makes sense anymore. My breath catches in my chest. The whole world around me spins. I feel like I might fall from my chair, but the act of falling requires too much energy. All I can do is slump. I press one hand against my chest. My fingers are shaking. I'm too anxious to even raise my hand. I don't think I could walk to the toilet even if I did get permission, permission, which is unlikely. The head invigilator is pretty scary. I don't want to deal with her. I don't want to deal with any of this. God, how, but how disappointed will Dad be? They'll all be so disappointed that I turned out to be an idiot. The biggest idiot. Ten years of education, and for what? I'm wasting it. I can't believe I'm wasting everything. Susie's pale pink pen bobs. It catches in the light. When I squint, I can see the individual particles of dust swirling in the air. Ten minutes have gone by. I still haven't written anything. Everybody else is writing. I'm not. I can't. Why? I reach for my pen. My palms are slick with sweat. I bet Lynn's having no problem with this paper. She's in the highest seat for maths. And I and though I've never seen any of her work, I'm sure she's a straight A student. She's just that sort of girl. I wonder where she is. I glance about the gym to repetuously. Not because I want to cheat. I'm not brave enough for that, but because I'm curious. We're seated in alphabetical order. My last name is Harper. Linz is Aitken. She'll be further ahead of me. Maybe to the right? Ah, there. I can see her. She's pretty far away, but I can see her clearly. Her hair falls around her shoulders in shimmering waves. She pauses, her pen still poised in her right hand, and glances upwards. Maybe she's staring out the window. Is she so confident in her own abilities that she doesn't need to focus on the exam paper? I shift and rub my thighs together. I'm sweating. Why is it so hot today? I'm, it must be because there are so many sweaty, stinking human bodies crammed together in this room. It didn't feel that hot when I was waiting for the train, lukewarm, more than anything. The nightmare surfaces to my mind once more in alarmingly vivid detail. It gets clearer and clearer the more I will for it to go away, like the legs of a spider slowly emerging from a sinkhole. Lynn's hands against my cheeks, her lips against mine, the sudden intense burning my eyes melting out of my skull. I draw in a sharp breath and grit my teeth together. I can't focus on my exam paper. It's all nonsense to me. Just numbers that have no meaning and blank spaces to show my working when I can't work anything out at all. I don't understand a thing. All I can do is stare at the back of Lynn's head. Half an hour has elapsed. Lynn is looking back down at her exam paper. Her slender fingers turn over a new page. Her emotions are so casual, they almost feel insulting. Is she trying to make me feel bad? No. Probably not. I doubt she even knows I exist. My stomach turns. I hate her. I really, really hate that girl. If only she would disappear. Guys, guys, guys. I have the worst feeling I could possibly have about this. Here we go! Then none of this would be happening. Everything would be so much better if she had never been born. Um, I don't remember closing my exam booklet. I don't remember putting my pen down. I hardly even remember picking my pen up. I don't remember holding my exam book in the air for the invigilators to collect. I don't remember being dismissed from the exam hall, and I don't remember collecting my bag from the back of the room, and I don't remember ex exiting the school and making my way back to the train station. But I must have done, because I'm here now. I feel like a large part of my life has been wiped clean away. Did I talk to Susie? I'm sure I did. Or maybe she tried to talk to me. I don't remember. She probably wanted to compare answers, not that she needs to. Susie's far, far smarter than I am. I have no advice to give her. No advice other than don't fuck up like I did. Not writing a single thing in your exam booklet will do that to you. Fuck you up, I mean. 
Oh well. It's too late to worry about that. The exam's over now. The whole time I stared at the back of Lin's head. I didn't answer any questions. Not one. Dad's going to kill me. He's definitely going to kill me. He won't kill me right away because he won't find out. But when my results come in and he discovers I got a U on my mass exam, he'll flip his lid. He'll be so, so angry. And it's all my fault. I wonder if he'll be angrier than he was when he learned about Jas's baby. Maybe. Failing one exam is potentially just as life-changing as having a baby. There's no way I'll be able to make up the grade in my second mass paper. Even if I got full marks, I'd be, I'd be lucky to scrape a passing grade. So it's over. I failed mass and now I've failed life too. I failed everyone. I'm a failure. But it isn't my fault. It isn't. I glance at the electronic signboard, but I don't see it. All of a sudden, the station looks rather different. It isn't the same station I usually stand at, waiting for the train to take me back home. There are no pedestrians, no vending machines, no board displaying the next trains. The tracks are old and rusted. They're overgrown with moss and stinging nettles. Everything is dark gray and dreary. This place looks like it hasn't been used in a long, long time. It's derelict, all but deserted. I'm the only person here. Am I still in London? Am I dreaming? Maybe I'm still in the exam hall. Maybe I passed out during my exam. Is this another dream? But if it is a dream, then why does it feel so real? The air smells stale. The sky is a dark gray. The clouds are light gray. The ground and the grass that grow upwards through the ground are black as pitch. The whole world begins to distort. I hold a hand against my eyes. They're burning. I'm burning. It's just like one of my dreams. Nightmares, I mean. I only ever seem to have nightmares. In this strange, bizarre, surreal world, anything could happen. Fish could swim in the air. Birds could fly in the water. The days could reverse, and tomorrow would be yesterday. There's no concept of time, but my heart continues to pound inside my chest, and my lungs continue to take in oxygen. A fine sheen of rain begins to fall from the sky. It's almost like the world is crying. But that's far too poetic a notion for a young, stupid girl like me. Girls like me who can't answer a single question on their math's GCSE paper don't deserve to think such fanciful things. This train station, however, is certainly fanciful enough. Is this my own world? Am I the only person here? Um, excuse me. You're in my class, right? No, I'm not alone. Of course I'm not. Even in my own delusions, I can't be on my own. I can never be on my own. You're going back to Strawberry Hill, aren't you? Her inquiry is polite, but it makes me grit my teeth together. Lynn with an E. Please don't do this. Just go away, please. It feels like she's looking down on me. Do you know if any trains are running? Um, this is all so strange. There's nobody else here, so... I was wondering if you knew what was going on. Why is she asking me? Do I look like I would know? I don't know anything. Maybe behind her innocent facade, she's mocking me, just like everybody else. She's mocking me because I'm not her. I'm just me. Plain. Boring. Lynn. Not Lynn with an E. She isn't me. I wish I was her, or maybe she was me. That we were the same, but we're not. We can't be. Um, excuse me, Lynn? I don't think she's ever addressed me before. Maybe that's why she sounds so hesitant. Or maybe it's because of the expression on my face. I don't know what my own face looks like, but it's probably quite scary. Lynn, are you by any chance feeling sick? I am sick. I'm sick of her. Lynn? She extends her arm out slowly. Is she going to touch me? My body shivers. I want her to touch me. But at the same time, I don't. I can't let her. So I take a step backwards. Disgusting. 
Uh, excuse me? Can you hear? You're disgusting! I push her away hard. I push her hard. In fact, she stumbles. Her eyes widen in surprise. Oh. She falls backward. Her behind hits the ground with a soft thud. She blinks up at me, anxious and unsure and afraid. Yes. She should be afraid. I'm the one with the power here. I don't usually have power in my dreams, but I do now. It would be foolish if I did not use it. Right? I kneel down, straddling Lynn's chest. My thighs pin her limp body at both sides. I need to block off her escape routes. Even if she tried to throw me off, I don't think she could. Her arms are white as chalk, skinny like twigs, and she doesn't have enough power to push me away. I won't let her push me away. But Lynn, you... why? Why should I need to answer her? I don't need to answer. Shut up. I slap her across the face. Her head jerks to one side with a sickening smack. For a few moments, I worry I might have shattered her skull. Is she really that fragile? Of course she is. I'm fragile, too. Maybe all people are, to a certain extent. Even people like Dad. But I'm not the same as Lynn. We can't be. Lynn, why, why are you doing this? Lynn blinks at me. Her eyes are filled with tears. A dark, deep, purplish bruise blossoms across her cheek like a rare flower it's almost pretty not pretty enough i want to hurt her more much much more i'm tired i'm tired of being the one who gets hurt all the time i slap her again and again and again each time her head jerks obligingly She's so easy to play with, and fun, too, like a doll. She's an incredibly lifelike, life-sized doll, with teeth that rattle around in her skull when I hit her. I know we're not close, but I didn't think you disliked me this much. Did I do something wrong? If you even have to ask, that shows you don't understand! What? You don't understand. You've never even tried to understand. But we... We've never spoken. Her voice is muffled through her sobs. The sound makes my head hurt. The invisible screwdriver is back. It bores into the base of my neck with frightening precision. I need her to stop talking. How do I make her stop talking? That's enough. I don't want to hear your voice anymore. You need to atone. Atone for what? For what indeed? What did she do? She didn't do anything. But she needs to be punished. She's making me doubt myself. I can't do that. If I start to doubt myself, who else can I blame for my faults and flaws? I don't have anybody else I can take this out on, and nobody who will listen, nobody who will understand. It doesn't make sense even to me. Of course, it doesn't make sense to her. That's why she can't talk. She absolutely, definitely can't. If she talks too much, I'll start to realize how stupid this all is. I'll realize just how hollow and empty I am. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I've always hated you, but why? There is no reason, no logical reason anyway. It's because you look just like me. What? You look like me, but you're better than me, you're better in each and every way. Her name is even longer than mine. Lynn with an E. You'd earn more play points if you played it on a Scrabble board. Not that names are allowed. It's against the rules to play names in Scrabble, strictly speaking. But that's never stopped Jas before. Jas has no shame. I have too much. Apparently when I touch myself, I pull stupid faces. 
I'm an idiot schoolgirl who doesn't know what she's doing. But it doesn't really matter, because no man will ever find me attractive anyway. No woman either. What about Lynn? I bet she doesn't pull stupid faces. She's probably better at making herself feel good than I am. She'll beat me at everything simply by being alive. There's only one solution then. Disappear! Just disappear! Go away! Go away! Go away! I grab hold of her shoulders tight, my fingers dig into her flesh. She whimpers. It's not enough. I slam her head against the cold, hard floor over and over again. I slam it hard with more strength than I know I possess. Her skull cracks, maybe it fractures, maybe it breaks. Maybe holes are opening up inside her head, and her brains are starting to leak out. I wonder what brains look like. I've never seen them before. Are they gray? In biology books, I saw when I was a kid, brains are always bright pink. I'm not stupid enough to believe that's really true. Just what is true, anyway? Is this real? None of it feels very real. None of it. Except the sick smacks of Lynn's head against the concrete floor. The water falls around me. It's almost like the sky is crying. Lynn is crying too. Her nose is running. Her pretty face is covered in red and blue and purple bruises. She's bleeding. She's leaking. But she's still alive. Her body twitches. Her breath forces its way out of her lungs slowly. In and out, in and out. She's so persistent. Just disappear. Go away. Leave me in peace. Doesn't she know what happens to witches? That's right. She's a witch. She's a witch who's stolen what should be mine. I have nothing. She has everything. That's fundamentally unfair. She deserves to be punished. Lynn, why? She looks at me. Her eyes are glassy. They swim with tears. She's so wet, you could probably stick a goldfish or two in one of her eye sockets. I bet it would be able to bog along quite happily. That is, if goldfish are saltwater fish, I'm not sure. I'm not smart, but I am smart enough to know the answer to her question. I have to hurt her. She has to suffer. That's just the way of the world. All because I'm not you and I wrap my fingers around her throat Spudsy what the hell just happened I expected bad things, and it was even worse than that. If you somehow, by some chance, managed to make it through that with me, subscribe, ting the little bell, leave me a comment down below, become a wonder friend today, and make Spudzy not so sad. I don't know what to say.